10 bars is 230 gold and we're just turning 230 gold into 900 gold. The economy should not work like this. This does not make sense. You don't just print money. We are printing money. This is hyperinflation. It goes wrong every time someone's tried it, unless that someone is me, in which case it works every time. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kingdoms Reborn. That's right, we're playing a brand new game today. What on earth is Kingdoms Reborn? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's like a medieval city builder. That's right, you've got to build up your cities, you've got to give them lovely resources. It's a bit like Anno, and it's very much like Banished. It's very easy to have your entire population killed off by one deadly plague. However, ladies and gentlemen, we will not be playing this game the way the developer intended it. For the developer intended a perfectly balanced experience where players would start out by doing a little bit of farming, maybe slowly working their way up the production chain. No, we're going complete and utter turbo mode by bypassing 50% of this game entirely and becoming effectively unlimited money monopolists who have the ability to fully annex the entire world instantaneously despite the fact that we probably really, really shouldn't be able to do it. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time we throw ourselves into this lovely game. So we're going to start a brand new single player experience. What seed are we going for? We're going to go for the seed of Spiffco, the greatest and most loving seed of all. The Spiff seed. Oh god, actually, no, that's that's just, you can't say the word Spiff seed. No, that's just disgusting. <laughs> oh goodness. We're going to just have everything on medium, the most default basic settings. We're going to start the game. Now, this game is absolutely fantastic. It's early access. I love it because early access games, 90% of the time, are completely and utterly broken, like this. Now, what is the basic storyline? Well, the storyline is simple. There's a great freeze, basically Frostpunk happened, and then this is the world after the freeze basically ended. Decades have since passed, since the frost took the land, and now we are the surviving few who are ready to rebuild a flourishing civilization. Cheers to a new beginning. Oh, it's fantastic. Now, of course, we're not the only people starting a brand new civilization. There are other civilizations out there. There's the Upsalab faction, the Borghild faction, the Rohau faction, the Stark number one faction. Ah, <laughs> oh, early access. But of course, today we're going to be playing this game in a very strange way. You see, normally, if you were to think, okay, how are we going to start our brand new civilization? There's a few things you'd look for. You'd look for really important resources like coal and iron. You'd look for access to fresh water sources like, say, a lovely river here that we could fish from. And most importantly, you'd look for a region like this forest province here, which has a fertility of 100%. Because otherwise, how on earth are you meant to grow food? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be throwing all of the basic civilizational bookwork out the proverbial window and picking this lovely province here. Why on earth are we picking this province? Well, it's simple. This is a province with no fertility. <laughs> it is absolute garbage. And I am picking this province to prove a point to the developer of just how broken this game is. This logically should be one of the hardest starts in the physical game. No fresh water, hardly any trees, you can't grow anything. How on earth are we going to survive? Well, we're not just going to survive, we're going to absolutely beans this game. Now, of course, starting out, you get a little bit of money in your bank and you can buy some early additional resources. What are we going to buy? Well, we're going to buy as many steel tools as physically possible. Why on earth have we bought 290 steel tools? Well, we've bought 290 steel tools because in this menu, you can buy steel tools for the low, low cost of 27 gold, which is absolutely fantastic. The only issue is steel tools don't start out the game being valued at 27 gold. No, they start out the game being valued at about 60 gold, meaning in the lovely starting menu, you can already completely break the economy of the game by buying an infinite amount of steel tools, pressing confirm, and then immediately basically selling them all on the black market for a markup of just over 30 gold. Now, what we're going to do is just hit confirm. There we go. It's time for us to start the game. And it all begins, of course, with a lovely town hall, which will be placing slap bang in the most habitable area in the world, a massive desert. Well, bam, there we go. Immediately, I'm going to pause the game and look at this. It's the spiffing Brit town, quite possibly the worst name for a town. Instead, we shall be named Spaftopia. There we go. Now, of course, you get to pick a lovely starting card. Do you want to get 30 gold every minute and a half? Do you want to get some wheat seeds so that you can grow beer? Or more importantly, do you want to be a filthy capitalist and get a trading post? Because that's right, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to build a building, any non-generic building, you need an actual card in order to build it. So naturally, we get ourselves a trading post, the most important building of all. We're then, of course, immediately going to have to start building our first few houses because people need a place to live. Otherwise, they get angry. So we'll slap down a few homes. We can even pick our first card. Now, we don't really have much money for any of these cards, but luckily, we're going to have a lot of money very soon. You see, one of the things that's completely and utterly fantastic about this game is the fact of just how easy it is to break. Now, of course, as I mentioned, we bought a whole bunch of steel tools, and as you can see, their base price 
price is 27 gold. However, they immediately start out the game being valued at 67 gold. I think it's because the AI is just terrifyingly trying to buy up as many of these as possible. This is fantastic for us because we actually only consume 14 tools a year and years take a long while. Oh, now that we've got our first houses down, we can actually start researching things on the tech tree. Naturally, we're going to pick mushroom log sterilization because if we're going to be getting food, we're going to be getting it from mushrooms. And more importantly, I'm going to pause the game and do our first trade deal. The first trade deal we're going to be doing is selling as many steel tools as we actually can. So there we go, we're going to sell 180 steel tools, bearing in mind this only costs us about 2,000 to buy. We're going to be selling them for about 8,788 gold. Lovely. Now what else are we going to do? Well, we're going to want to build ourselves a few more houses. In total, we're going to need 10 houses because what we're doing is bypassing a large segment of this game. In total, we currently have nine houses which we're working on at the moment. I'll make it 10, so that's how many we need. And I'll also get all of our lovely workers here to just start cutting down all of the local trees. Equally, at the same time, because we have some money in the bank, we're going to buy this lovely region here with 183 gold. And with this extra region, what are we going to do? Are we going to grow some food here? Nope, we're just going to cut down all of the non-fruit trees. Lovely stuff. We need the wood for houses, so it's very important. Now, the only building we're actually going to be buying, which isn't a house or something completely specialist, is the legendary mushroom farmer. The mushroom farmer is a very strange building because it's a building that turns wood into mushrooms. Now, unlike all other food sources in the game, the mushroom farm is completely and utterly broken. <laughs> it's just not even fair. Oh no, our food reserve is rather low. Now, luckily, we're going to basically be able to solve the food reserve issue relatively quickly. One thing I will do is upgrade our town hall another level because this allows us to roll a card where we can buy wood. There we go. We get to spend half our treasury and buy some wood. Uh, this is one slight issue because it means we're going to buy a metric ton of wood. However, the buy wood card allows us to spend half our treasury and buy wood for five gold each. Yet at the moment, wood is valued at 10 gold. This is rather interesting. However, we need more storage to fit 730 wood. So let's build a few more storage yards. <laughs> now, of course, you're wondering, ladies and gentlemen, how on earth do I make money in this game? Well, there's two ways you make money. You make money from taxes from your lovely buildings. You make money from holding regions. You get base income. But more importantly, the higher level a house is, the more science it produces and the more income it produces. That's right. People make science in this game and you need science to research new important things like a trading company. Because if there's one thing you know about me, it's that I love trading companies. Ah, and there we go. Fantastic. The mushroom farm is ready. Now, you might notice the mushroom farm is very interesting. Now, what the mushroom farm does is it converts eight wood into 20 mushrooms. That's a nice amount of food. There's just one slight issue. It can do so much more because by giving it the sustainability book, suddenly five wood for 20 mushrooms. And then we can upgrade it with intensive care, giving it an additional 30 productivity. And because we need a bit of extra food at the moment, I'll even hit it with a speed boost. So now our mushroom farm is producing at a terrifying rate and we have some more storage. So I can spend half the city's gold on wood. Wabam, we now have 749 wood for only 3,745 gold. What are we going to do? We're immediately going to sell some of it. Of course, this happens after we finish building all of these lovely houses. There we go. We can now trade again. So with our 731 wood, which we now have, we don't really need all of it. So we're going to sell 300 of it for a lovely 2,323 gold. And when we hit trade, we're back up to 6,000 gold. So effectively, we've just got wood for free because the global market doesn't particularly work very well. Now, fantastic, because we're building so many houses, the more houses you have of any tier, the more upgrades you get. If we have 10 level one houses, then we get access to influence. If we have eight level two houses, we can build a library. We have some level three houses. We can make bricks. We can even do some beekeeping. But more importantly, if you have level four houses, you can just start fermenting grapes into wine. And very interestingly, we have a region here which is suitable for grape farming. Ah, oh, it is perfectly balanced indeed. All right, we can once again trade and I think it's probably time for us to completely break the game now. So with our 6,000 in the bank, what we're going to do is we're going to basically cheese through all of the progress of the game. As what you need to do is level up houses, right, in order to progress. And by doing so, you unlock the next set of buildings based off of your houses. Now, this is absolutely fantastic. However, it can, of course, be cheated. So to get up to level two houses, all you need to do is supply one level one luxury. This could be beer, it could be the smoky green herb thing, it could be furniture, and it could be pottery. Now, of course, it's going to be the smoky green herb thing because that's the cheapest luxury. And all we care about is getting the cheapest luxury. So we're going to get ourselves a hundred of that. But then equally, we need to get another luxury in here. Now, normally that would be expensive. We'd have to buy a whole bunch of, say, pottery at 12 gold. But we have this pottery card here to instantly give us 80 pottery. So we only actually 
actually need to buy 20 pottery here. That'll give us 100 pottery. Then we're going to need to pick a tier two luxury. Now this is much more complicated as this is where we're going to have to start spending a whole bunch of money. Now the most expensive tier two luxury is wine sat at 45 gold for every 10. So we're not going to buy that, but instead they have the much more affordable luxury of either cloves or candles. Cloves are the slightly cheapest at 22 gold. So we're going to buy ourselves 100 cloves. Now this is a huge amount of money we're spending, but trust me, this is the best way to bypass the entire game. Now to kind of counter our costs a bit, we're also going to sell 80 stone. That means this transaction is only going to cost us 3,253 gold, but we're bad. We'll trade it away. And of course we'll spend our pottery card to instantly gain 80 pottery. There we go. And now all of our houses are leveling up to level two. So all of our lovely resources are on their way. And with all of these fantastically upgraded houses, we can see that they need two types of tier one luxury in order to increase their level. Now, of course, the second one is going to be the cannabis, which is coming through very shortly. And there we go. Our research is finished and also so is our trade. We've also managed to pick up mushroom log sterilization, meaning mushroom farms have their consumption reduced by 50%. You can kind of see what's happening here because by cutting their mushroom consumption by 40%, this mushroom farm turns three logs into 27 mushrooms. What a stupid conversion rate. And there we go. That's our first level three house. Oh, it's happened. This is perfect. Now, of course, we're looking for level four houses to unlock the winery because as fun as having a brickworks is, it's not what we're looking for. Do I want to buy the brickworks? No, I don't want to buy brickworks. And there we go. There's our first level four house. I'm not sure whereabouts it is. Ah, oh, here it is. It's over here. Fantastic. They've got themselves the clothes that they're looking for. But now more and more of these houses are upgrading to level four, but we need to get each and every one of these houses up to level four. So there's only two houses missing so far. Why haven't they leveled up? Well, it's because there's no one living in them. We need more citizens. Well, it should be fine. New people are likely just to move to our city anyway because of how fantastic we are. Now, a few more people are moving in. This house now has residences, which is perfect. We only have one house, which is completely empty and we need to get that leveled up. But there we go. Two more houses have hit level four, meaning we are just one house away from level four. If this house levels up, that's it. We can produce wine and we will become godlike tycoons. Yes, leveled up and leveled up. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. We've unlocked the winery. Do we want to buy it for 540 gold? We do. We're bam the winery, ladies and gentlemen. Ferment grapes into wine. It needs iron to be built, but honestly, that doesn't make a difference for us. Uh, people don't like living next to the winery, but that's okay. We can just kind of build it where people don't live up here. And oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the fun begins. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's the winery. The winery converts 10 grapes into 10 wine, basically meaning you turn free gold into 30 gold. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to immediately throw in the sustainability book, meaning we turn six grapes into 10 wine, which basically means profits are even higher. We're also going to boost up its efficiency. And now we load all of the grapes inside and things are looking good. Anyway, so now that we have some wine, what we'll do is we'll sell some of this lovely wood. We'll sell our first crate of wine, which is going to give us 310 gold. Absolutely fantastic. We'll buy a little bit more wood, just about 100 wood should do. And then more importantly, it's probably time we start buying a few more grapes. So there we go, 100 more grapes. And then, you know, we can treat our population just a little bit. We can get them some medicinal herb to keep them alive. There we go. Never say I'm not a generous ruler. I am so very generous. Oh, we've unlocked vassalization. Lovely. Vassalization is brilliant because it's basically us spending influence to gain a continuous income from another civilization. And the best thing is they can't do anything to stop us because unless they have as many houses as we do and have actually unlocked vassalization, they can't fight back. So we've spent 500 influence to effectively attack Luna with a strength of 200. Uh, Luna has zero, meaning we're guaranteed to win. We can then take another bit of our influence and vassalize Havri over here. Once again, the AI physically can't fight back because they haven't got to the point of the tech tree which allows them to fight back. Oh, and we've conquered Luna, lovely. So that should mean we get, yep, 5.1 tax from just them being a vassal, lovely. And we've conquered another place, meaning we get, yes, 11 gold from vassalizations, lovely. Next up, we're going to need to buy even more grapes so that the wine production can keep on going. So I'm going to ask for a pleasant quantity of 150 grapes. At the same time, we need more wood so that we can keep the lovely mushroom production up and running because mushrooms keep the people fed and more importantly, it stops them from eating my goddamn precious grapes. The following message is approved by the Tourism Board of Spaftopia. Are you tired of living in a standard civilized country? Are all the comforts of modern life just not quite enough? Well, maybe you should emigrate to the kingdom of Spaftopia. Rated 286 on the UN's top places to live in 2020 and the 2020 TripAdvisor. Why on earth can you even breathe here a 
award, we managed to get first place. Spaftopia is a kingdom for everyone. Some foreign dissidents like to claim that the citizens of Spaftopia don't have access to tools, medicine, and sometimes even food. But trust me, King Spiff assures us that all of these claims are false and simply fabrications by foreign governments as means to dissuade you from joining the utopia that is Spaftopia. To join, simply like the video and go into the comment section and pledge your allegiance to the eternal King Spiff. Failure to pledge your allegiance will mean that you cannot be a citizen of Spaftopia. This will of course become an issue when Spaftopia's borders eventually grow so large they encompass your own kingdoms. And then you'll be a citizen whether you like it or not. Thanks for watching. Oh, and lovely, we've got the next technological era, which means we can finally research trading companies. Lovely. Trading companies are god tier because they automatically trade resources. You don't need to manually set them up at a trading post, but most importantly, they have a much lower trading fee. Their trading fee can go down to zero. Anyway, we finally have wine, so the winery is very happy. And you know, it makes sense for us to build yet another one. So the second winery is going in. We get a combo, of course. The more wineries you have, you boost the efficiency of the other. And despite the fact that this winery isn't going to be made for ages, it is still providing an efficiency bonus. In fact, I don't need to actually have this building be built. It doesn't need to take resources, but it will still provide a lovely 5% bonus to any wine production we have. And there we go with 50 wine in reserve. I think now is probably a good time to sell it all. There we go. That's 1,176 gold. Although there is an annoying fee, which if we get rid of, that's an additional 300 gold. So what we're then going to do with this lovely gold is buy ourselves 50 iron so that we can finally get the second winery up and running and then we'll also need to buy some more grapes. Grapes are still cheaper than they've ever been. They're down to the fantastic cost of only 2.98 gold so yep we'll order a whole bunch of those in and we have upgraded both of the wineries meaning they now have a 155% efficiency which is absolutely fantastic and now wine production will be in full swing as we convert grapes into wine at a terrifying rate. I mean the efficiency is just insane. We turned six grapes valued at three gold into 50 wine valued at 25 gold. It is just insane. The thing is the value of wine is going to go up because when the value is beneath the base level it increases. And research is completed. Oh my goodness we got the trading company. Finally we're also going to get the Silk Road. This is a special bonus because it means trading posts built on desert tiles lower their trading fee by 10% which is brilliant because that basically means building a trading company slap bang right here is enough to get its trading fee down to zero. But there we go. This trading company is going to completely replace the need for a trading post. In fact, we're going to get ourselves another one. We just need as many trading companies as possible. They are fantastic. And there we go. We've got another trading company. Now, this trading company's job is entirely going to be based on importing. So we're going to choose a resource to import this trading company's job. It is entirely focused on making sure we have as many grapes in the supply as necessary. So we're going to aim to have at all times 250 grapes in storage. Absolutely perfect. There we go. So we've just spent 75 gold. It's important some grapes. That's fantastic. Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Spaftopia has kind of grown up to a population of 99. I mean look at that. That is just insane. Things have gone um, relatively well I would say. Other than the fact that generally speaking we need more grapes in our society. That's right. We need even more grapes. Things have gone fantastic. I've started candle making by importing all of the necessary resources required to actually do candle making. I mean it hardly costs us anything. And the best thing is even though it costs us a few hundred to import the resources necessary to make candles, what it allows us to do is upgrade these houses, which in turn pay for the cost of having to make the candles. Now, wine production has gone a little bit insane. You see, efficiency is what effectively ties the amount of resources that come out at the end of the day, meaning this winery here, which used to convert 10 grapes into 10 wine, now converts 6 grapes into 21 wine. That's right, it converts a resource that costs 3 gold into a resource that is going for 27 gold. Also, I've deliberately not been selling any wine for a while so that the price climbs right back up to 30. And now that the price is high again, I will now actually start selling the resource again. That's right. This is how you game the economy, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. We have 2,000 goods which we can export. Go sell my wine for me. Equally, the food issue technically was an issue until the mushrooms came in. Because now that mushrooms exist, we're able to quite simply convert, say, four wood into 32 mushrooms. It is a very lovely, fantastic fantastic way of making food. I mean, we produce almost 3,000 mushrooms a year now, and we're going to be trying to make more because mushrooms are just food. They're necessary. It's food. You need it. It's lovely. Anyway, now that we can start selling our wine again, the money comes on in. Wabam. There we go. We sold 180 units of wine. That's 5,000 gold. We now have
have 5,000 gold. Also, I've started deliberately expanding our borders out a bit because I want to make my way over to this little stone circle so that we can get a free card and then we'll go left and get a free card from this tribe sat in the forest. Oh, and there we go. Spiftopia has 100 people living in it. Lovely stuff. Pretty sure this makes us a decently sized town now. Now, yes, a few people are dying from starvation and yes, I could technically just set up a trade route to trade in food, but um, no, that's, that's not what I want to do. Instead, we're selling wine again, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the price is technically crashed down to basically nothing, but that's okay because as long as it's more than the free gold necessary to buy the grapes, in fact, it could even be less. So that's turning 18 gold into 480 free gold. Generally, that's considered quite good. Oh, there we go. We've conquered another vassal and another one and another one and another one and another one. Lovely stuff. That boosts up our gold income. 30 gold a tick from vassalizations. Lovely. Equally, at the same time, we've managed to get the trade fee down to zero. In fact, it's technically less than zero. It's at minus 5%. And our efficiency is up to 110%. I'm not particularly sure what that means. Normally in a workplace, that means you get extra product. So do we get extra gold from a trade? There's no way that would be allowed. Also, considering we have a whole bunch of level four houses, I'm actually going to say that all houses can now consume wine because we have so much wine lying around. I mean, we just have so much. So there we go. We're now getting level five houses. We can make gold mines now. We have a gold smelter. Would I like a gold smelter? I'd love a gold smelter and I'd love a mint. We could have a gemstone mine. And a jeweler? Okay, we want a jeweler, definitely. This allows us to craft gemstones and gold bars into jewelry, and jewelry is the most expensive product in the game. It has a base price of not 30 like wine, but instead of about 50. So what we're going to do is slam ourselves down a few additional jewelries. Heck, we'll even get mint, because that converts gold bars into gold. Now we are going to need iron, as that's one of the many resources necessary in order to build half of these buildings. So I'm going to order in a shipment of 80 bricks, because sometimes Sometimes use bricks for upgrade and then just about 100 iron as well lovely stuff fantastic all of these upgraded houses of course level 5 houses it means we get more gold and we get even more science eventually this will allow us to get incredible things like for example tax adjustment so that we can tax our citizens more and more importantly wine snob so that wine production can be increased by 30 percent oh and here it is ladies and gentlemen one of the strangest options available the mint so basically what happens is the mint can converts gold bars into gold coins. It converts 10 gold bars, which at this moment in time would cost us 250 gold, and it produces 500 gold from that 250 gold. Basically, you double your money. But the interesting thing is that the higher the production is, the more money you get from each gold bar. So if we spend 61 bricks upgrading this, suddenly we get 650 gold from the same 250. And it only gets worse. <laughs> oh, it gets so much worse. Because we don't even have to buy the gold bars. Instead, we can just set up trade importing in the gold ore, which only costs us 10 gold. That allows us to save money on not driving up the cost of gold bars too high, meaning we get even more profits basically, and I love profits. Now just to also help with our various minty shenanigans, I'm also going to slam down another trading company just so that we can straight up buy gold bars, because as great as having gold bars are, we could really speed up the process by just importing them. I'll also upgrade this building so that it becomes a mint town. This increases the efficiency even further so we now get 725 gold and now things are really starting just hit the absolute insane levels of money making we're up to 16,000 gold in the bank now this is just terrifying quantities of wealth i'm going to be claiming this province and also the next province just to get a lovely bonus well bam claim our prize consume 40 percent less input or 20 percent productivity ah it's 40 percent less input every time because well bam you just slap that into here suddenly instead of using more gold bars we're using less i actually didn't notice just how many gold bars we had. I realise now we could have so many more mints because we have 136 gold bars just lying around and we get 825 gold every time a gold bar is used. That is insane. It's absolutely incredible. All right, we're going to get yet another mint built. Now that this mint is made, it should boost all the other mints up to there. We go level two and thanks to the mint guild, that increases their efficiency even further. So our mint here now turns 10 bars into 900 gold. This is insane. 10 bars is 230 gold and we're just turning 200 30 gold into 900 gold. The economy should not work like this. This does not make sense. You don't just print money. We are printing money. This is hyperinflation. It goes wrong every time someone's tried it, unless that someone is me, in which case it works every time. Yes, currently we're able to basically import our entire society. No one else outside of this village is actually producing anything more than tier one luxuries, and yet we're able to import physically anything from an invisible black market, including gold bars, which then just get printed down into free money. 
I mean, it is just terrifying the amount of money we make from, from just 10 gold bars. Oh my goodness, we're just smelting down gold bars at a terrifying rate. I think we need to actually up the amount we're importing just because of how much gold is getting consumed in our society. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it. We're making a stupid amount of money. Up to 84,000. There is just nothing we can spend this money on. You know what, bam, let's get another sustainability book. And we've hit the next era of tech tree. Right, I want tax adjustments. Yes, let me decide my own tax rates. So things have gone great for Spaftopia. We've achieved 221 people, although 40 people have just died over the last, I don't know, few seconds. Uh, no fault of their own, of course. It was entirely an accidental scenario involving me just stopping f all food production so that we could focus on building a couple of wineries. So now, because we have so many wineries, as you can see, uh, the efficiency of the wine town has gone a little bit insane. If we take a look at this lovely winery here, we produce 25 barrels of wine, a little bit more than the 10 that wineries normally produce, and we produce these 25 barrels of wine from just a measly six grapes. It's truly incredible just how watered down we can make the wine, and yet we can still find people still willing to buy it. However, the bulk of our money does not come from wine anymore. Instead, it comes from something slightly more insane. It's from just gold bars. Uh, gold bars are only 24 gold, and we basically just print money. The mints have done incredibly well. In fact, they're the bulk of basically 90% of our income. Now, what I will do is I'll spend two more industrial world cards to get a few more mints built. This way we can just boost up the efficiency even more. We now turn 10 gold bars into 1,000 gold, which is just insane considering the price of gold bars just keeps going down for some unknown reason. I mean, we have so much money we can basically import whatever we want. We have achieved infinite gold. It turns out in this game, basically everything can be nice and challenging up to the point where you unlock the mint. As soon as the mint is discovered, this game's economy no longer actually functions because you are able to just import gold bars and then just instantly convert them into raw gold coins. There is physically no way that this is okay, it is not fair, but it is absolutely fantastic. And the worst thing is there's no way to counter it. It is just free, perfect, infinite money. I mean, this is it. We've actually achieved perfection. We don't actually need to produce anything from this point on. We could actually just give up entirely on all of our industry. We don't need to be mining coal. We don't need to be cutting down trees. We don't need to be making food. We could just literally convert everything into just importing food and luxuries and then instead just have our entire economy bankrolled by a whole bunch of mints just printing money from gold bars. These gold bars still only cost 25 gold and if they get too expensive doesn't matter because we can just start smelting them ourselves. Oh, we're up to almost 300,000 gold. Um, I can't actually express the stupidity of this income. Like there is just no way that this is balanced. It's I, I just love this game. There we go. We finished our research again. Let's just get, I don't know, increased science production. I'm sure that'll really change the game but already we've got another boost of 30%, meaning wineries now produce 32 barrels. Our mints are now boosted even further. This means we are getting 1,075 gold from each and every gold bar. We've accumulated 300,000. Apparently we need to accumulate 500,000 and then we'll achieve an economic victory. Sure, that's that's fine. That's actually very doable. What we'll need to do is actually set up an import and the resource that we want to import is the gold bar. We will simply try and import 10,000 gold bars and this should mean that our mints will get a little bit more insane. All right, the mints are at full force now. We're importing gold at a never before seen rate. Gold bars now cost 33 gold, but that's still more than enough money for it to actually justify itself. I mean, we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. There is just no other way to express what has just happened. We have achieved infinite money thanks to the mints. I never expected mints to be the source of unlimited income, but just turns out mint is in fact the way. It is the way forwards. It is the guaranteed way of making stupendous quantities of money, even in circumstances when money really shouldn't have been made. And every day we stray closer to the 500,000 necessary to just win the game. In fact, I suppose I could just increase taxes a bit, couldn't I? Yeah, I could just could just go from very low taxes to medium taxes. Heck, I could go up to very high taxes, probably. All right, the game is really starting to chunk now. FPS is getting nice and low, and that's how I like my early access games. I mean, admittedly, we are driving the game to its absolute limits. You shouldn't be able to achieve a population this large, really, because you should be producing most of these resources yourself which means you wouldn't be able to have 84 laborers just lying around doing nothing. Instead, you'd have to have hundreds and hundreds of employees. But no, we have 84 laborers lying around doing nothing, which is great because it means if we want to just destroy the entire world, we can just drag a lovely box right the way over here and say, yep, I want the entire map deforested. Go, my lovely peasants, go. And so the procession to murder a whole bunch of trees is now begun. You'll notice as the peasants run out into the wilderness, they start gathering millions and millions of resources. They are a little bit like like ants and just like ants
and they are bloody terrifying. Oh, and there we go. That's victory. Um, this is what the end game screen looks like. We've achieved 500,000 gold. Uh, the button is just to return to the game. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I love early access games and really hollow victory scenarios. Feels great. Really makes you feel like you've earned it as well. Now, as much as I would love to continue playing this game, I realize that my PC will crash if I go much further, and that is certainly not what I want to do. So this is the end for Spaftopia, ladies and gentlemen. A insane settlement with a ridiculously large population and the ability to make so much money, it makes feasibly no sense. Here is our revenue charts. This is how much money we were making normally. And then this is the segment where I decided to build a whole bunch more smithies. And as you can see, we started making a little bit more money there. Our population has also gone insanely high. And you know what? I think we've had an absolutely incredible game. We've basically finished everything. Oh my God. Hit, just look at the train of peasants trying to load in all of the resources that we've just collected into this one warehouse. This is a terrifying hunter-gatherer society. <laughs> right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit. This has been the very perfectly balanced game of Kingdoms Reborn, a game where you can basically have infinite money as soon as you decide to make the greatest error that almost all governments make, which is just to press the print money button because what's the worst that could happen? Turns out in this game, nothing bad happens. It is just an endless cycle of increasing wealth with no repercussions, and it is fantastic absolutely love it. Well done to the developer for including this incredible method of realism. I love it. As always, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed today's video, then feel free to give it a like. It does massively help us out. In terms of the next video coming up, it'll probably be maybe something Heroes of Might of Magic Key. We are getting quite close to the release of Cyberpunk, although they do keep delaying it, so maybe you'll get a Cyberpunk video in 2077, or maybe you'll get it in 2020. That one's entirely on the game developers, I'm afraid. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our lovely patrons who make these fantastic fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much. Pat yourselves on the back, you lovely majestic sausages. You have really helped us out, so thank you. And hey, if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe already? And if you're wondering what video to watch next, well, look no further than this one on screen. Now, as always, it is hand chosen by myself. It's not just any video. This isn't even an MS video. This is a Spiffing Brit video. You're gonna absolutely love it. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day, and goodbye for now, my friends.